When the Buddha listed the factors of the path, right speech comes right after right resolve. Right resolve is resolve on renunciation, non-ill will, harmlessness. And right speech is defined as abstaining from lying, abstaining from divisive speech, abstaining from harsh speech, and abstaining from idle chatter. So what's the connection? Part of it may have been because right resolve leads naturally into right concentration. But to get the mind rightly concentrated, you need to develop some skills. And one of the important skills is how to talk to yourself. And a good way of getting practice in how to talk to yourself is looking at your speech outside. When you talk to others, how do you speak to them? Because the way you talk to your mind and the way you talk to others is very closely related. Inside it's called directed thought and evaluation. As the Buddha said, once you've directed your thoughts to something, you've evaluated it. Then you break into speech. So you want to be very careful about what you talk about, how you talk about it. If you're used to speaking in a divisive way or speaking in a harsh way, it's going to come into the mind and it's going to wreak havoc on your concentration. The ideal speech, the Buddha said, is truthful. It leads to harmony and concord. It's pleasing to the ear, and it's timely. That's another one of the analyses the Buddha gave of his own speech, was that it was true and beneficial and timely. Just true was not enough. It had to go beyond that. Timely there meant that you know the times to speak in pleasant ways and times to speak in unpleasant ways. In other words, there are times when Harsh speech is useful, and what's actually classified as divisive speech can also be useful. In other words, if you see somebody's getting involved with somebody who's going to be harmful to them, you want to give them a warning. Your intention is for their protection, it's not simply to break them apart. And you're going to need that kind of speech as you get the mind to settle down. First, of course, is giving yourself a true report of what's going on. Watch the breath. If the mind is settling down with the breath, fine, keep it going. Try to breathe in a way that's comfortable. But if the mind is not settling down, you have to look into why. This is where you want to hear some truthful speech from inside. What's the mind focused on? There will be times when it's embarrassed to admit to itself what it really wants to think about. But if you've gotten in the habit of speaking truthfully outside, it's going to be a lot easier to be truthful inside. Part of this relates to the Buddha's instructions to Rahula at the very beginning of the practice. If you've done something wrong, you admit it to somebody else. And that way you can learn from them. This willingness to admit the truth, even when it doesn't reflect well on you, even when the truth doesn't reflect well on you. The willingness does reflect well on you. And it makes you willing to learn, puts you in a position where you can learn. So get used to telling the truth outside. Get used to speaking in ways that are not divisive. You're trying to bring the mind together with its good friends inside, mindfulness, alertness, ardency. Craving is going to come in. It wants to be your friend. And it's going to try to separate you from them. It's going to tell you that meditation is selfish, you're wasting your time, or it'll tell you that you don't have any talent, you don't have any hope of becoming a good meditator. Craving can tell you all kinds of things to divide you from what will be your true friends inside your mindfulness, your alertness, your ardency. So 
So recognize divisive speech inside. And you do that, of course, by learning how to avoid divisive speech outside. Divisive speech is basically true speech, but you're pointing out the bad features of someone so that someone else will look down on them or not want to become friends with them. And you have to be very careful about that. As for harsh speech, its motivation is basically to hurt somebody's feelings. And again, there, Buddha does admit that there are times when you have to speak in unpleasing ways. But you really have to be very careful about time and place when it will be effective, when it will not be effective. The effective here being, meaning that you want them to become skillful. You want them to abandon unskillful behavior. This is why parents have every right to speak harshly to their children when the children are really getting out of the line, to let them know that it's serious. The Buddha didn't have any use for the idea that if you say something displeasing to someone, you're harming them. Because so much of the, the path, so much of the teaching is critical. Because you have to learn how to be critical over your own mind states. But still, you have to know the right time and the right place. When you learn that right time and the right place outside, then you can apply the same principles inside. One of the times when you have to speak in a comforting way, an encouraging way. And one of the times when you have to lay down the line, remind yourself that what you're doing is out of line. It would be good if you stopped right away. The mind needs both kinds of internal speech, but it's most effective when it's used at the right time. I knew one in China in Thailand who yelled at students almost all the time, and I find myself, found myself when I was staying with him, just not listening after a while. And John Foon was much more effective. He'd be friendly, kind, and then if something was deserving of coming down hard, you knew the difference. because you're open to his influence. So you want your mind to be open to its, the influence of the voice inside that's trying to train it. So give yourself encouragement, give yourself pep talks. But then when the mind is misbehaving and it's saying, well, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, if you let the it-doesn't-matter attitude take over, then it's going to eat up everything. You have to remind yourself when it does matter that you put more effort into practice, that you spend less time looking at screens, spend more time looking at your breath. And finally, there's idle chatter. One of the nice things about being in a monastery is that the bottom line is that people here are practicing, they're trying to keep their minds quiet. So it's considered normal to be quiet. And you want to respect other people's quiet. You want to break silence only when necessary. There's that saying that silence is golden, so if you're going to break it, make sure you've got something pretty good. As the Buddha said, the opposite of idle speech is speech that is connected with benefit, is beneficial, and it is timely. It's right in the season. When you get used to that, then you can apply the same principles as you're meditating. What way of talking to yourself will be beneficial right now. As for the idle chatter of your defilements, the idle chatter of your distractions, your hindrances. Look at it that way. That it is just idle chatter in the mind. Nothing of any real worth. 
when sensual desire comes whispering, saying, how about spending a little time with a little fantasy? Or ill will comes, and you start thinking about people who've wronged you in the past now, it would be really good if they had their comeuppance. When sleepiness comes on and says, don't test me, just go, go to sleep right now. Their restlessness and anxiety come in and tell you, you've really got to worry about this. Or doubt comes in. you are recommending that you doubt the practice or you doubt your own ability to do it. Recognize all of that as idle chatter. And many times it's ill-intentioned, which would be the opposite of right resolve. All the chatter in the mind that would destroy your concentration, think of it as resolve on ill will. Ill will for your true happiness, your true well-being. So when you think about the principles of right view, that suffering is something you do and it's something that's caused by other things that you're doing inside. Right resolve builds on that to get rid of the mind states that are going to lead to suffering, to start developing the ones that will lead away. Realize the importance of your speech in that context, how you talk to others, how you talk to yourself. How you talk to others creates the outside environment for the practice. The more harmony there is in the group, the easier it is to practice. And then you bring those principles inside as you talk to yourself to get the mind to settle down, clear out its defilements, clear out its hindrances, and develop a really good relationship with the breath. In other words, the internal speech that aims at concord, that's true about where the problems still are. And gives you encouragement that this is a good thing to do. It doesn't waste your time. Because that kind of speech knows when to fall silent. It does its work and then it stays very still. That's how right speech then connects to right concentration, brings all the factors of the path together. So it's good to think about what you're doing as you're sitting here focusing on the breath and how it fits into this larger pattern of the path. It gives you some perspective, it gives you some ideas that when issues come up inside, you can ask yourself, how does this particular mind state fit into the path, or is it the opposite of the path? And if it's the opposite of the path, how do I get rid of it? It's in this way that your inner teacher gets informed. and becomes more and more skillful day by day.